By 1944, the Axis forces had lost three years of military superiority and were facing an overwhelming Allied attack. Germany's high command paused bomber and aircraft manufacturing in order to focus on creating powerful jet fighters. However, the Allies caught up with the German aircraft industry and the Germans worried when they realized their adversaries were going to deploy the British Gloucester Meteor jet-powered airplane. The Luftwaffe held out hope for the development of the Focke-Wulf TA-183 Hookerbine, a groundbreaking jet fighter that would replace the Messerschmitt Me-262, the first operational jet warplane. As the Allies approached Berlin, the final steel and aluminum supplies were depleted. The Germans kept building planes in the hopes of repelling the Allies as they made their last drive towards the Führer's bunker. Due to Allied troops' victories and lack of resources, Germany failed to gain advances on the battlefield and in the technology race during World War II. The German High Command intended to develop a quicker, more powerful and less expensive jet plane to fight Allied assaults. The Focke-Wulf TA-183's development began in 1942 although it was first considered as an experimental project. For two years, concept testing and design adjustments were ongoing with no clear road to production. By 1945, the Luftwaffe was eager for solutions to the rising frequency of Allied bomber strikes into the Axis territories. The TA-183 Hockerbine was created as an experimental project with no apparent road to commercialization. The Messerschmitt Me-262 was a strong warplane capable of outperforming any other existing warplane. However, due to engine stability issues and a lack of strategic resources, Germany was unable to develop enough jet fighters to have a meaningful influence on the war. When the German High Command learned that the Allies were testing their own jet fighter, the British Gloucester Meteor, this sprang into action. Because of this, Germany's challenge of coping up with the Messerschmitt Me-2 appeared difficult. On July 3, 1944, the Third Reich launched the emergency fighter program to fund strong but low-cost fighter options, ideally jet engine or rocket engine concepts. To save money, the Luftwaffe cancelled most bomber and multi-role aircraft manufacturing. Once the program was up and running, the ambitious TA-183 was reassessed, perhaps as the Luftwaffe's final chance. The TA-183 Hockerbine was modified to consume as little strategic resources as feasible, assuring Germany's ability to compete with efficient Allied production capabilities. Germany's Messerschmitt Me-262 was an expensive fighter, but it provided them important insights about jet plane design. The TA-183 was meant to replace all frontline aircraft in Luftwaffe service with a quicker, more stable, more nimble fighter. It was prompted by an RLM effort for a capable jet-powered aircraft in its emergency fighter program, which could talks enhance Munthorpe design. The plane was named Hockabine after a cartoon character about an Aldeki raven who caused havoc wherever he went. Despite being officially referred to as Project 5 or sometimes Project 6 
Focofolf engineered refer to it as the designed tool. The TA-183 was developed in response to a changing emergency fighter program. It was a novel fighter with a nose-mounted intake for increased high-speed performance and stability. It was equipped with a swept back wings, a tricycle gear and a futuristic T-tail arrangement. The pilot handled the controls from a central cockpit compartment and the jet was powered by a single 3500 pound force Heinkel HES-011 turbojet engine. The T-83 was designed to attain cruising speed of up to 620 miles per hour, which was much faster than the Messerschmitt ME-262 and far beyond the capabilities of any Allied aircraft. With a battery of four heavy caliber 30mm guns installed in the nose, a combined was meant to attack Allied bombers moving over Germany. The aircraft was designed to carry a heavy payload of up to a thousand pounds of external weapons and to serve as a strike fighter if necessary. The midline fuselage location permitted semi-recessed armament and five fuselage hard points could be designed with specified supplementary ammunition. The construction was largely built of aluminum, steel sheets and wood, although materials had to be changed as the project neared completion. The primary spar was made up of two I-beams connected by the steel sheeting shear webs. However, due to a lack of aluminum in Germany in the later half of 1944, the designers were forced to use wood for the wing's construction. The aircraft's wooden wing left it particularly exposed to enemy fire, but the overwhelming speed of the engagement was expected to offer adequate protection. The early design phase of the TA-183 Hokkabine neared its conclusion in January 1945, with engineers attempting to overcome challenges related to the jet center of gravity. The Luftwaffe chose the Yonkers EF-128 for urgent development, with the Focke-Wulf team's Hokkabine coming in second. However, the Hokkabine was chosen as the best design and the Tonks was tasked with creating mock-ups and preparing for the first test flight in May 1945. However, due to tremendous wartime efforts, the Germans were unable to complete their prototype before British soldiers stormed the focke -Wolf installation on 8th of April. Exiled in Argentina, Kurt Tonks resurrected the TA-183 project, dubbing it the IAE-33 Polky 2 or Arrow. Several changes were made to the project to ensure stability and improve performance. The Polky 2 prototypes were built and used during the 1955 revolution in Argentina. However, the project was cancelled due to a severe financial crisis in Argentina, who elected to purchase the F-86 Sabres at a fraction of cost. According to some historians, the Soviet Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15 was influenced by the TA-183 when the Soviets obtained Hakobine's design. Although the design, construction, features and proportion of the MiG-15 are identical, the aircraft itself is unique. What do you think was the most advanced aircraft developed by the Nazi Germany during World War II? Leave your thoughts below and don't forget to check out my other videos on German aircrafts on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you guys in the next.